Hello and welcome back to Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. Today we're going to be doing a universal joint on the driver's side of a 93 Jeep Cherokee. We've already evaluated that the bearing is bad, so we're going to take the whole assembly out. Now we can reach in, up, oh, pull the shaft straight out. I'd say that universal is pretty yeah that's definitely stuck so we're going to be replacing this along with the bearing assembly I've got this loaded in a ball joint press. Another one. Completely rusted in place. Yeah, clean out your holes here with some sandpaper. You don't want to take down any metal, but you do want to get as much of the yuck that's in there out. And then we're going to take the abrasive wheel and clean up the inside edges here where the circlip's going to sit. And we're going to do the same thing on the other shaft. We'll get back with you as soon as we're done cleaning these up. Oh, the gnats out here today are terrible. All right, now that we've got these both cleaned up, I get a little bit of grease. I'm gonna start pressing in the new, the new universal. Hopefully, before it starts pouring on us. New Universal. Nice shiny new pre-greased. And four new circlets. Now we're going to do is we're going to take one cap off first, very gently and carefully. And we're going to set the piece up on end. And we're going to take, press, and then we're going to take this piece. Try to show you guys what I'm doing here. In one side, and then down and into the other. Very careful. And then press and then the other side. Very careful. Now, center your piece in the middle and tap. Be careful you don't slip out because you might knock the needles out of place. One in far enough to get one of your clips on. And make sure. 
sure that it is seated. Turn it around. And so you got to get the other cap down in far enough. And once you've got both of your circle clips all the way down in, let's go around, double check, make sure they're completely seated in there. So the last thing you want to do is have this thing come apart while you're tooling down the road. All of a sudden you drop a drive shaft. Good to go with this. Let's go ahead and get it into this one. And just a tiny little bit of grease in here is helpful. And yeah, I know I forgot my gloves. I realize I forgot my gloves again. But a little bit of grease right in here. Careful, these edges could be super sharp, and these are. I can feel how sharp they are. One wrong move, and I'll be bleeding. There's a little bit of a lip on that. All right, yuck. Yep, the grease, the ground for a towel. That's gonna get some comments, I suppose. Uh, let's see. One cap. Let's do. Now try to get the joint right into the middle before you start tapping on anything, otherwise you very likely knock a needle out. more new clip. Almost push it on my finger. Almost. I saw that one drop right into the groove. That's cool. Now well, maybe with some luck, I get the other side to do the same thing. Yeah, no such luck. Nice easy movement. Yep. And now we're ready to put this back in. What I like to do before I do that though is I 
Now just make sure that everything's nice and happy. And then we'll go ahead and slide the shaft back in. Take the brand new, brand new wheel bearing assembly. Actually, I forgot something. We're gonna clean this all up right. Well, I already cleaned this up, but I'm gonna anti-seize this just in case we ever have to pull the bearing back out again. All right, just like that, we've got it anti-seized. Now we're gonna turn around and grab the uh, brand new bearing assembly. Happens to be a drive works part NT513084. Uh, it's just what the parts store happened to have, no particular reason. Black oxide studs on this. There's a speed sensor on the back side of it, even though we don't have ABS in this. Uh, all three holes are exactly equal in distance, so you don't have to worry about which way you're putting it on. Let's go ahead and slide that right back in there. And then from behind, line up your bolts. This one here is the one we didn't have any fight with at all. I'm going to put that one in first. And then we're going to put in the top one. Put in the one we had uh, initially go after with the rounded nut removal tool. And again, these are 12.13 millimeter or half inch. Ah, you know what I forgot? Backing plate. I gotta pull these bolts back out. Put the backing plate on. The backing plate will actually throw off your spacing with your rotor as well. So keep that in mind. Now we'll take the new bearing assembly, put the uh, backing plate on first. Always the uh, opening goes towards your caliper. In this case, this is weird. Apparently it goes right there. Now we're gonna take the wheel bearing assembly. Feed the axle into that. And start feeding your bolts in.
And last but not least, we're going to want to be used to push everything out with. And then tighten those down. big washer that in we're gonna put our wavy washer on actually the wavy washer goes on afterwards put this on first Caliper back on and the rotor. Let's get the rotor taken care of. Get these out of the way. Just wipe me out inside of that out a little bit. Make sure there's nothing in here that's going to get stuck between the hub and the face here, actually. Let me go grab some fluid film real quick to give that a shot. Let's give the threads up there a shot too. Sure you take your hook out don't leave it in there that'll make for a real bad day and then work these back down you'll notice the notches on the bottom try to get those in first oh this thing's just not being super cooperative with me here That's because the pin slide is in the way just a little bit. That's this thing right here. In, in the wrong spot. We're gonna go ahead and put our caliper bolts back in. Again, those were 12 millimeter. Get those tightened down. Tighten this bolt right here, not up. All right, now we're gonna tighten up this nut and drop the screwdriver down through the vents of the rotor. It only works on vented rotors. Uh, breaker bar in there. That's snugged up good. <clears throat> I 
And that was a 36 millimeter socket that I tightened that up with. Now we're going to turn around and find, we put the wavy washer on. We're going to find the uh, tassel position that lines up with the cotter pin hole. Sorry about this one, Ray. I don't really mean to hurt your soul, but I'm going to put the old cotter pin back in because it's, it's big, it's hard, it's solid, and it doesn't want to go back in. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Helps if I'm in the right spot, I guess. And then... Yeah, whoops. That's got to go under. What? Why are you being like that? not going over the nut. Isn't that interesting? Why isn't that? All right, let's try this again. Turn around so the longest ones is facing outward. Batten that around. Batten that one around. Push them right down so that nobody gets snagged on them. I'm going to go ahead and Put the wheel back on, pick up all the tools. All right, now, get this thing up in the air. Super muggy, but not too hot, which is kind of a good thing. Ugh. Never start it with the impact. Bad idea. That universal is nice and happy now. Let's make sure we got a brake pedal. All righty. Jack stand.
universal joint. Driver's side front, 1993 Jeep Cherokee. If you guys found that one to be helpful, entertaining, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. And most importantly, you've got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches.